I mentioned in my oil gallery modification video that I would be powder coating my engine block. I powder coated my old 7 bolt block without any preparation work. There is a lot of flash on the outside of that block just like every other 4G63 I've witnessed and though the powder coating covered up and sealed the flash nicely it left what I consider to be unsightly blobs of goop on the shiny baked on finish. Because it's part of my car's personality it deserves no less than what it had. But on this time around I'm determined to improve on everything I learned from the last build. I'm not worried about any of this surface rust, it'll be gone when I'm done with it. I'm going to grind off all of this flash, so this time the final powder coated finish comes out flawless. The other side of the block is in pretty good shape. The only rough area is around the dipstick hole and in the buttresses for the motor mounts, and around the front balance shaft casing. The last block I coated with no prep work, and it turned out beautifully. I can't wait to see what happens this time around. But before I start messing with dipstick holes and buttresses, I'm going to need some protection. I don't want to hear it screaming, so I'll need a set of earplugs. You want to wear large wraparound safety glasses when you're doing this too. A face shield by itself is inadequate. You really don't want to touch cast iron with your bare skin because the moisture and acids from touching it will rust it almost instantly, so wear gloves. My goal is really just to remove the worst of it and blend it in. This makes a mess, and if you're going to spend any time on this, it's something you should do before you do your machine work. The reason being, after your machine work is completed, the last step it goes through before assembly is a thorough cleaning. I'm taking the finish of my block to a whole nother level, so it's going to require that treatment a second time. See? I'm not going overboard, just knocking off the chunks and blobs of flash. I'm not trying to hide the fact that it's a cast iron block by smoothing the whole thing down. Powder coating will hide almost all of that texture, and when everything else is bolted to it in my crowded DSM engine bay, it's nearly impossible to see it anyway. At this point, an hour has passed. I broke a sweat. This is what happens when you sweat on your block. When you're doing this kind of work, you gotta hold that shit in. Save it for break time. Your best friend for removing surface rust is a wire cup brush. It's effortless, really. It's important to remove it because the more there is, the faster it rusts. And leaving it alone can lead to pitting. Powder coating isn't the only treatment it will receive. My cylinder head was coated with Gliptol, and I intend to repeat that same treatment inside the block. You remember what the instructions for it said, right? All that stuff about surface preparation and degreasing and... Well, the preparation work is extremely boring and time consuming. And I've already covered the details in the previous Gliptol video of what's required. So the only way I can make the next 18 hours of video footage interesting for you is to accelerate it to 256x and give you something other than a grinder to listen to. That's your cue, Rojo del Chocolate. <laughs>
Now that we've got the contamination layer removed, it's time to blast out all the junk and fix one of the problems created by removing it. Glit Paul sticks to bare, uncontaminated surfaces very well when baked on, but it needs to penetrate those surfaces in order to stick. Sanding with power tools is a great way to remove the contamination layer, but it has a polishing effect. So I just need to scuff it up a bit. Wire brushes are the best tool I have for this, and because of how careful I have to be in here, I'm sticking with the Dremel. On the topic of being careful, do not under any circumstances feel like this is a necessary step that you must do for your build. It's actually very dangerous to do this preparation work for the Gliptol application because one slip with the grinder and you can turn your whole engine block or head into junk. Bad Jaffro, go stand in the corner! That really did happen. The two minutes that followed were not captured on video. Even though you watch me do these things to my parts, there's a level of risk involved that you have to own full responsibility for. That goes for all of us, including me. When it comes to doing this level of preparation, if you gouge the mains so that the bearing doesn't fit, it's junk. If you gouge the bores for the pistons, junk. And the seats for the oil squirters? Well, if your crush washers don't seat, it's junk. These are all precision machined surfaces that require extra attention to protecting them from harm. That includes the flat milled surfaces on the outside of the block as well. My preparation here is pretty inadequate from what I've discovered, and I owe it to you to tell you that it can happen to anyone. This is a tiring and tedious job that took me more than a month to complete. Perhaps 7 to 10 layers of tape would have been best protection because we're bound to making mistakes. All the tape did here was prevent the main from getting gouged. The hardened bit contacted the journal, but it didn't bite. It only left a mark. No high spots and you can't feel it with your thumbnail. It just shined it. It looked terrible with the tape layer intact, but I think it's going to pass. Trust that I will get a second opinion on this. But my opinion is that it'll be alright, and if it's not, then it's my responsibility to fix it because science. But back to business. It's time to peel all this tape off and move on to the next stages. I've spent enough time on this, and quite frankly I thought it would take a lot less. As you remove the tape, don't pick at it with anything metal for obvious reasons. Once I've got all the tape off, it gets another carb cleaner bath to remove any remaining adhesive residue. Now that the block is cleaned out, I want to get oil back into the bores to protect the hone surfaces from humidity, and then to start test fitting parts because some of my other 2G parts will require further modifications to play nice with the 6 bolt block. If you're subscribed, then you'll be the first to see them. Thank you, Senor Chocolate, for the beats, and to every last one of you for watching these crazy Jaffermobile videos. 